Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Film Consortium podcast. I'm uh, Derek Acosta, your host, here with Jody Silly and our guest, Merrick McCartha. Welcome, Merrick. Good to be here. Yeah. Thanks, thanks for joining for us. Thanks for coming and joining <laughs> us from far away. Yes. Merrick, you are a working actor in Hollywood. Do you live in Hollywood currently? I do. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you were in San Diego for a while. Are you originally from San Diego? I'm originally from Detroit, Michigan. Oh, okay. And then I moved to San Diego, went to UCSD, became an electrical engineer, and lived in San Diego for years. And uh, only the past few years, I got into acting. And oh, okay. in the last couple of years, I said it's time to move up to, to, to Los Angeles. Get into the action, yeah. Um, Have you always acted? Was no, no. Really? No. What, what made the switch? Well, we'll get into that. Oh. But <laughs> we should... Maybe talk about your resume as an actor. Sure. You, you've been on a lot of television shows. Yes. You've worked with um, some major uh, film and television actors yeah. as well. What would you say are your biggest credits that people might recognize you from or may have seen you? Um, oddly enough, with the young folk, it's the show called Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> it was like one of my first uh, guest stars. It's a Disney show. Oh, okay. And uh, a lot of people, a lot of young kids... <laughs> I'll, I'll say all the cool stuff, that, but I say Jesse, and they oh, yeah, yeah, Jesse, and it's uh, that. Um, but otherwise, you know, uh, Criminal Minds, uh, a lot of great work. I did some scenes with Joe Montana, who was really uh, wonderful to work with. Um, uh, uh, gosh, what's the other one? Scandal. Oh, nice. Um, with Kerry Washington and, and Lisa Kudrow. Uh, okay. That group was great to work with also. Uh, very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Um, yeah. So now Jody, <laughs> sorry. Oh, no. I was everybody knows who Merrick is. And yeah, no. Um, well, you've done a lot in here in San Diego and you seem to be very busy now that you've moved to LA. When did you decide you wanted to start acting that you said intellectual engineering is a big shift away? We electrical. Yeah. Electrical uh, engineering. I, I, uh, Went to uh, school. I grew up in Detroit, and uh, my parents are both police, and they were very focused on me excelling academically. And I went to a uh, uh, pres pres prestigious high school called mm -hmm. Cass Tech High uh, in Detroit, and it's you know Diana Ross went there, Lily Tomlin, a okay. lot of great uh, people that are celebrities went to Cass Tech, and it was um, had a great focus program on electronics. And so from that, and I was good at math. I learned that early on, yeah. and so I went into uh, studying electronics and uh, went to UCSD for electrical engineering. So I was an electrical engineer for for years. Uh, I worked on uh, uh, systems for satellite programs for wow. NASA, for European Space Agency, for the Japanese Space oh, Agency. Big time! Oh, you're wicked smart then. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I I. Pulled it off. <laughs> but uh, I did start doing some acting when I was really young, back in Detroit. Okay. Uh, I studied at Detroit Repertory Theater, uh, did a program there. I did some community theater as well. I did a, uh, a sort of a traveling youth theater troupe uh, when I was there also. Um, and it was something that I really loved to do, but, you know, again, focused academically. I stayed with the, the math, the science, and when I got here, continued that as a career. And only, you know, further, several years in, did it really just hit home that I was really missing that other part of me that I still love to do. So I took a big, big chance and left that all behind yeah. and went into acting, starting in San Diego. And uh, that's kind of where things kind of changed for me. So how long have you been a working actor? Uh, well... Working, <laughs> as in getting paid working, or just working? <laughs> well, uh, how, how long have you been doing uh, uh, this acting gig for? Yeah, I, I really had the notion to take it seriously probably like nine, maybe ten years ago. I did uh, the San Diego 48-hour film project. Okay. It was my first real venture back into acting, and it's a short film competition in San Diego. Yes. And uh, that's Was that the noir film? That no, that was actually not the first one I did oh, okay. uh, for the film uh, for the film project. The first one I did was a film called Just a Man. Okay. And uh, with Kristen Chandler. With Kristen Chandler and Laurie and Hill Purcell and uh, Peter Butenheck, um and uh, directed by Mike Brugemeyer and uh, Bill Bork was the DP and Chad Reese producer. A lot of great people worked in that. So 
that actually went over, went, did really well mm -hmm. that year. It won all the major awards that year, and it kind of, and it was because these uh, when they screen your your film, they do it in a real theater right, on the big yeah. screen. It was my first time seeing and hearing myself on the big screen. Oh, How and my my, my oldest son actually Madison worked with me as well. He's a young kid. And uh, he worked in, produ in the production as well. So we went to the theater together. I'm sitting there with my son, and I looked up, and there's me. And it, it just it just came over me that this is what I can do. I'm like, yeah, this is for me. This is this is something I think I can do. Wow. Yeah. What is it about uh, acting that drew you to it? Do you like the performance? Do you like the What's your favorite part of? Like, what I, I think uh, part of it is that you know, working in science and working as an engineer, yeah. I've always been very serious, very focused, very reserved mm -hmm. um, in everything about me. And w as an actor, you get to explore a lot more of yourself. Okay. When you act, so I can do and say and experience things as an actor um, that I wouldn't really do in my you know normal life. I kind of stay so reserved, and that's one of the ways that I have this cathartic freedom to just kind of let go. And I think that's probably one of the best parts about the art form that I like. Oh, nice. Yeah. It gives you a chance to cut loose and yeah. What are your favorite roles to play then? Do you, uh, do you prefer a certain role? Uh, well, I tend to get the, uh, the lawyer, the detective, uh -huh. the doctor, doctor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sometimes a politician, uh, because you know, I, uh, uh, I guess I come off as more of a professional authoritative figure, which is great. Um, but I've also played a uh, couple of villain roles and those are really fun to do yeah. um, because I don't, I hate yelling. I mean, uh, one people that know me know I hate yelling. I hate getting upset and losing my cool, but mm -hmm. uh, you know, playing a villain that does lose his cool, that gets to yell and, and freak out and kill people on camera. These are things that, you know, uh, those are the kind of roles that kind of probably lets me, be the freest, letting the full other part of myself that I never, you know, uh, normally use <laughs> yeah. out on, on screen. Nice. Yeah. Cool. Um, so now you're in Hollywood. Yeah. Working actors. And that's your full time gig. That is it. That's all I do. Nice. I'm an actor. Let's back up a little bit. So you, how long you were in San Diego acting? Kind of what was your experience there? Here, uh, yeah. Well, in San Diego, uh, I started with the 40 Hour Film Project, yeah. and I did get an agent from that. Wow. From that. From that From, very that, from that film. I sent the film out, and the agent, yeah, yeah, sure. Oh. So I got on board with that, and I did some Who was some your work. agent? Um, at the time, it was Shaman Freitas. Okay. And uh, I did some you know industrial work, some commercials. At that time, there's still the, the last vigils of the TV production happening in San Diego. Oh, okay. And so I got a little bit of little tiny bit of that, I think, uh, before that was completely gone. Hopefully, we'll see that coming back in San Diego yeah. as well. Uh, and then I did student films. I did I did a lot of uh, San Diego State student film projects. Uh, I guess part of the curriculum is there to recreate uh, specific scenes from award-winning films. And they're okay. supposed to do it shot for shot, I think. Yeah. And so I did one that was from American Beauty doing uh, Kevin Spacey's role, which, you know, I got to throw a plate into the wall. And it was the dinner scene, oh, the, the famous one. Scene, yeah. yeah. So uh, that was that. And, and then I did, you know, other, I did more work for with my uh, team, the Amalgamated Grommets, which did Just a Man and the movie you're thinking of, which is called Fatal Air, which also won a lot of awards and went to Cannes Film Festival. Uh, by the way. Yeah, I uh, I was looking up your bio before the interview, and I, I tracked down that film and watched it. It's oh, yeah. kind of like a noir comedy. That's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's funny. Uh, it's it's a really funny film. Uh, and Mike Brugemeyer and uh, the team came up with that idea, and I always joke that you know Kristen Chandler, who stars as the femme fatale, and that we consider ourselves very serious actors. You know, we want to be the next. Mel Streep and Gary Oldman, mm -hmm. and they came up and said, "Okay, you're going to do this film about puppets and flatulence." And we're <laughs> like, mm, "No, we're <laughs> serious actors. What are you doing?" Yeah. So we did it. We're like, well, "We trust you," and uh, it went a lot better <laughs> than we yeah. thought it was going. It to shot be. really well. Yeah. yeah it was, yeah. Uh, and that helped the comedy. Yeah. Making it seriously. Yeah. Um, what made you decide to make the move to to Los Angeles? Uh, working in San Diego, I realized that. Uh, I did want to do this full time, and because the market in San Diego was the work is still too few and far between, 
I wanted to get into the, the bigger market, the big market, which is Los Angeles. Yeah. So I pursued representation in LA. Okay. I ended up getting uh, representation there. And I w started to go up, you know, maybe a couple times a month to audition and to work. And uh, over time, over a couple of years, they got to be more and more frequent of me driving three hours there and three hours back. Yeah for a five-minute audition. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, it's about a couple that years. just to hear. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So uh, so think about People talk about rejection as an actor, and I, I think about that now. Uh, it's bad enough as an actor for some people to look at it that way. They go in to an audition, and they don't book the role, and they're a little upset. Yeah. Now imagine that you drove three hours to get there. Spent five minutes, three hours back. Yeah. And then find out you didn't get it. And so doing you, it time and again. And doing Cheers. it over and over again. So for the sake of your sanity. For the sake of your <laughs> sanity, you have to change your mind about auditioning. You have to look at it as your invitation to perform. It's a performance for you. This is what you do. You audition. You get good at it. You learn to love it. Because if you don't love it, it's gonna come through and you're not gonna, you're not gonna <laughs> those might be job. the only performances you yeah. get. Yeah. So uh, that so uh, over time, uh, it got to be more and more frequent. Yeah. And the last couple of years, it was like a couple of times a week, several times a week. And it was just not sustainable to live in San Diego and then drive, you know, eight hours round trip, or whatever it was tip typically taking me to get to uh, L.A. Wow. So. So what does your schedule look like now as an actor? Are you, are you still getting auditions a couple of times a week? Or are you... Yeah, um, I've got really good representation in L.A. I still have uh, representation in San Diego. My rep now is uh, Pam uh, Punkett, Elegance Talent, in mm. her office in Carlsbad. So between those three agents, yeah. uh, I audition pretty much every day. Wow. Yeah, I average probably four or five auditions a week. They vary from commercials to TV shows, yeah. uh, some industrial stuff as well. Wow, so that's really busy. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. uh, that's what everybody wants to. Do. You, yeah, that's what you want. That's yeah. what you want. If you're, <laughs> if you're, gonna, if you're gonna do this full time. You gotta audition a lot, and you gotta be able to let go. I, I recently did a couple of great auditions for commercials, and haven't heard anything back. It's okay. Yeah. There's another one tomorrow. You know, it's okay. Very nice. Um. Yeah. So to rewind it back to yep. San Diego. What was it like for those early years? You got representation right away. Yeah. But, um, and, and it was mostly student films and local productions. Right. Well, as far as, as, far as films, it was the student films. But yeah. with the San Diego representation, they want paying jobs. So they w there were commercials the that were being yeah. produced and, uh, it, you know, uh, videos for certain companies, uh, okay. things like that. So we, you know, it was still, it wasn't bad. I, I thought it was pretty good. I mean, you know, the uh, the commercial and the, you know, the video production down here was not bad. And that was your full-time gig at the at the time? Or? No, no. I had to work side jobs oh, okay. uh, while I was doing it. Yeah. And uh, that was a challenge because uh, I couldn't, even though I'm trained to work in these professions, and I couldn't work a nine-to-five job and then say, hey, I, I need off tomorrow. I know it's last minute. Yeah. But I got an audition. You know, they you get fired doing that. You don't, <laughs> you can't have <laughs> a job. So you have to have these like random that side job, jobs that yeah. you can do. Was there ever a moment, uh, or maybe several moments where you felt like, man, I was working on projects with NASA and all this stuff and, and acting is so different, you know, it, and, and getting your acting career started, I'm sure was a, was a struggle mm -hmm. and a step down. Mm -hmm. Was, was there ever a moment where you felt like, man, what am I doing here? Or did I make the right choice? You know, was there ever like self doubt starting, uh, starting out that? Oh, the, um, several people around me said those exact words. Yeah, okay. what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> did you make the right choice? Yeah. Don't you have? To, yeah, I, I stuck to it. I mean, yeah, it was rough. Yeah. Um, and I was fortunate to learn pretty early on that it was going to be rough. Okay. And I think there's a lot of myth about acting that oh yeah you get in and within a year or two you're on. You know, the Big Bang Theory. Of, no, mm -hmm. no. Unless you graduated from Yale Drama or Tisch out of New York or, you know, yeah. these schools, then maybe that, you know, you can have more of a direct path. But it's it's rough. It take, it, rough in a sense that it takes time. Yeah. You can't expect it to happen right away. And you really do have to work. You have to train. You have to hone your craft. You have to understand the business. So uh, I learned hard lessons early on uh, as well. And uh, that kind of helped me out knowing that it wasn't going to be, you know, 
a, a short path necessarily. When you decided to pursue acting, um, did you go seek out training, even though you had acted um, when you were younger? Yeah, you 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 have to. Uh, you, you should yeah. as an actor. Even you know the best actors still get coached by acting teachers. But yeah, I, I went to uh, schools in San Diego, which are all very good. I mean, there's you know three top schools here. Or, uh, there's Billy Coward who does uh, WCI Studios. There is uh, Carrie Scott who does Rehearsal Room. Mm -hmm. I think it's still downtown. There is uh, Terry Ross who does Acting Professionally who d does a wonderful uh, class for our students also. So they, they've been around for a long time. And those are the places that I trained down here. Mm -hmm. And then I also trained in places in L.A. There's a place in L.A. Um, called Annie Grinley's Audition Technique class. And he realized a fantastic audition technique, uh, audition uh, coach. Okay. And also, more recently, with Burke Studios in L.A., which is taught by uh, Gregory Burke Sobeck, who is a professor at Yale University, who brings that Yale training program down to L.A., oh. which uh, we uh, students get to take advantage of that. So these are great, you know, great classes. I still... Um, train and work and you should you know you're you're, you're always going to be and even still you, you know when you think you are great and wonderful uh -huh. you want to have that other person that can can coach you make sure that you're still on track that you're not falling into any bad habits all these things are important what hey. would you say uh an aspiring actor some additional things an aspiring actor should think about obviously there's training like you just talked about but what else can you tell these guys out there, these guys and gals? Uh, yeah, I, I really want uh, new actors to make sure they can manage their expectations about the business. That seems to be the biggest foil for most new actors. Is they come in and they think, okay, I'm going to do this. And they bomb a couple auditions. Oh, man, this isn't for me. And they're ready to give up because they are free to audition. Or they just don't understand the business. You know, Auditioning, when you go in front of a casting person and you don't get picked, it doesn't mean you were terrible. <laughs> It, does, <laughs> it doesn't even mean you weren't right for the role. You could be right for the role. You just didn't get picked at There's all. There's so many factors. There's yeah, so many factors. Be aware of. There's so many factors. So, yeah, no, uh, manage your expectations. Really, not just train for acting and, and learning your craft, but learn the business. Learn how things work. Yeah. Learn, you know, why you need to have a good formatted re resume. Learn why you need good headshots. Learn why you need a variety of headshots. Learn, learn, learn where you need to go to market yourself. Mm. Is this all stuff that they uh, teach in, in any of those acting classes? Or no, <laughs> <laughs> no. no. Sure. Acting classes teach you how to Just act. Acting. So, they, where, how do you learn the business? If uh, there are some uh, acting teachers that will offer a quick course on the business. Okay. Um, I studied with Candace Paul in San Diego. Mm -hmm who was, is a casting director and cast the TV shows that were in San Diego and learned a lot of real business knowledge from her. Yeah. Same thing with Billy Cower. He does a marketing class, uh, I think, maybe every other year. And, uh, again, a lot of uh, real business uh, aspects from, from them. Um, but you got to seek those things out. You know, If you're going to study acting, that's one thing. But um, so see if you can find someone that can teach you the business. Okay. Um, there are books on it. Um, there are other, you know, actor, you might find an actor mentor that you can, that's working and that you can ask questions to. In your opinion, what is the biggest, and I'm not talking about acting, I'm talking about as far as knowing the business, what separates the pros from the amateurs? Is there any quality or trait that, that people could focus on, you know, that, um, that really steps, steps it up to where it's like, okay, now you're starting to be more of a professional once you understand this aspect of how the business works? Uh, let's see. I would say, um, yeah, once you, you know, once you understand how the different types of productions work, I mean, most new actors don't. Mm -hmm. You know, doing a, doing a uh, short film is going to be different from doing a sitcom, vastly different. Um, doing a, a regular episodic TV show like Criminal Minds is going to be different from doing a daytime soap opera. It's vastly different, again. Hmm. Yeah. And what about... Uh, uh, well, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, are those things that you just have to learn from experience or being on set or talking to people? Or, or is that something you could you know, learn from a book? Or 
There are books on it, I think. Yeah. Um, I learn mainly from experience. Yeah. I have my basic, basic things. You know, don't be rude to anyone on set. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> Unless they deserve one. it. No. <laughs> Even if uh, they deserve it, don't be rude. Um, don't, um, you know, um, make sure you're prepared. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. You know, know what you're there to do. Um, and uh, learn how to take direction and be the, be an actor. I, I've oddly enough have worked on professional sets, and I've seen actors come in that are trying to tell the director what needs to happen. And I'm like, hey, <laughs> <laughs> you may have a great idea, but you really got to let them do it. Yeah. You know, it's 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 just a thing. You gotta you know you gotta respect the hierarchy and, and, and the organization of the set because when you start overstepping that, then you start to look like an amateur. Oh, okay. Yeah. Knowing your place. I, w- I would say knowing your place. I would say letting other people do their job. They're letting okay, other people. That's very important. <laughs> it's so important. Yeah, yeah. Even any any project. I think. Any project. You want to go so let key. people. You know, let the sound guy do his job. You let don't know do. how to do sound. Please don't direct. You're not the director. <laughs> yeah. But that's just part of sort of people get put. We'll say put in their place <laughs> <laughs> very quickly. Yeah, uh, I would say that. Let other people do their job, or you will be put in your place. There we <laughs> go. Yeah. What about an actor? Because here's what I see: I see yeah. people kind of want to do it, want to act, and move to LA, and yeah. then just crash and burn, and then come back. What would you say to somebody who is out there in San Diego or Iowa or? Florida, obviously uh-huh. there are actors outside of LA, yeah. in New York. Yeah. What would you say that they can do even before they make that trek or sort of follow that dream? Are there things that you can do around you that don't require being in a hub like LA or New York? To prepare you for the mm-hmm. move? Um, I would say, you know, really make sure and really be honest with yourself that this is something that you really want to do, that it's really for you, and that you're good at really get feedback from where you are you're in iowa you're in idaho you're in kansas get make sure that you're good at it uh then (laughs) you need to make sure you have money saved up because it's not going to happen right away especially if you haven't gained representation before you get out there i mean i was lucky that i was able to drive up to la from san Diego to meet with reps to to get signed for representation if you're out and you know Mississippi or Illinois, it's not that easy. Although there are casting places around there yeah. that may be helpful. Before you move to LA, you want to make sure you've got, you should hope to at least have a good idea of how to get an agent or that you've got one kind of lined up uh, or be prepared to spend three months, have yourself uh, saved up financially to cover three months at least of expenses because work will be maybe slow for you right off the bat. Um, so you moved up to LA when you were getting auditions so frequently that it, it seemed necessary. Yes. A lot of people, especially young, young actors, they, they'll go to LA, like you said, without representation. Mm-hmm. Um, is it, are, are, is it easy to get auditions if you don't have representation? If you just go out to Los Angeles, you know, what should people expect? Um, so there's a a way to go about getting a representation. So to that break seems to be key. Then. Yeah, to, yeah, you want to get representation. If you now, granted, there are certain ways for you to submit yourself yeah. without an agent to get work. There are casting sites that you can use that will allow you as an actor to get make pretty decent money submitting yourself. Um, uh, so that's one thing to keep in mind. Um, but yeah, it, you know. Going up there without representation, uh, you just realize you're, it's a risk. You, mm-hmm. you, now, so to get representation, I would say start with getting a, a commercial agent first um, because they're easier to get. Mm-hmm. And commercials honestly pay a lot more than you yeah. think. Um, uh, theatrical agents, which handle television shows and films, the rates for work on a theatrical project are spread out so that your initial payment is lower but over time you gain a lot more whereas commercials the initial payment is much higher usually up front yeah. with the, the potential the national commercial potential to gain a lot more but commercial that as we say in the business commercials pay the bills yeah you know have you done um national commercials yeah yeah done a couple national commercials uh are you uh, can we say what what 
the commercials were for? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think the most recent one is for McDonald's. Oh, There's really? a McDonald's commercial. Nice. Yeah. What was that like? Um, it, it's funny because uh, McDonald's, when they make their commercials, at least in L.A., they have a specific set that is an actual McDonald's restaurant. Oh, you told me that, that is that. not yeah. for customers. It's not for retail service. Oh, really? It's the it is a McDonald's. full on, it, and it's a full on opera. Yes. It is a full yeah. on functioning McDonald's, meaning they can make fries, burgers, all that stuff is all there. Mm -hmm. Uh, the it's exterior is it, clean. The exterior is the McDonald's. Yeah, and it is extra clean, yeah. <laughs> which is probably the reason why they're like, why you know, sure, yeah. but why you know, take up someone's franchise a film? Uh, why risk going to a place that might not be super clean like we need it? You know, so all just these things are probably a set. they just built they just built a standalone. Uh, maybe you don't even know the answer to this, but at that McDonald's, when they're filming the commercial, do they? bring mcdonald's staff in to cook food for the commercial or <laughs> is it all, all actors. actors there or? Well, well no there's no mcdonald's staff there i mean there's corporate staff and, yeah. and marketing staff and production staff that can cook the food okay um okay. there so they they made mcdonald's fries on my commercial they made big macs and all that sort of stuff oh, nice. and had them various sandwiches all set out during the production for the filming so yeah very cool yeah hmm. um so then uh, just rewinding back a few minutes to my question about acting and when it when it's best to move to Los Angeles, mm -hmm. is is it almost better to just do acting in in your local town? Like you did it here in San Diego for years yeah. before you kind of felt that you were drawn to L.A. Mm -hmm. um, or do you wish you had gone to Los Angeles sooner? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I. I mean, it really depends on you. You know, you have to be in the right personal situation to go yeah. and take that kind of risk. Um, if you don't have many obligations, if you're, if you got a good sound financial backing, i.e., your parents that are <laughs> don't mind bailing out when you need money, yeah. and maybe it's okay. Um, and you got to have sort of the the moral fortitude to not fall into a lot of the traps that you can fall into yeah. in L.A. There's a lot. Uh, what would you say some of the like survival techniques are once you're in LA? Um, survival techniques. How do people get through? I mean, let's say it takes ten years to get to where you want to be mm -hmm. in your career. Is that a crazy number? Is that could it take that long? Um, yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, um, you know, I've known people in LA now that have worked in it for longer than me that haven't uh, been on any, you know, haven't been on as many major productions as I have. And um, I don't know. I, I can't really explain it. Um, I don't know their full story. I mean, there could be times when they weren't really not focused. Mm -hmm. But I feel like if you're focused, if you have a good sense of how the business works, you probably can, can make, some, uh, make a good headway. How much does luck factor into it? Oh, luck factors in a lot. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of things you're not going to be able to control. But I still think persistence is key. Persistence will yield success for you. Focus on what you can control. Yeah, as long as you're persistent and consistent, uh, then yeah, it'll. Th there are a lot of avenues for that'll open up for you. Nice. So you've worked with some actors that are um, pretty famous, very well known. Um, like you mentioned earlier, Lisa Kudrow and um, <coughs> Joe. I'm gonna mess up the Joe Montana. Montana. Mm -hmm. um, what do you um, do? You do you ever learn lessons from working with those people? Do they do you do you feel like it elevates your acting game when you when you get to work with somebody of that stature? Yeah, I I think uh, there are little um, little uh, things that are subtle that I picked up from working with uh, people like that. Another funny thing is that um, you get to learn because in an acting class you got to go through this process of fully memorizing a scene it's this long drawn out thing that you've got to get and mm -hmm. uh on a set no you're cutting away half the time <laughs> so you don't have to i mean you you do want to work and know what you're doing but realize uh that you know the memorization part that you agonize over uh for auditions or for um your classes you really aren't going to agonize that much uh on a like a re regular episodic that is not necessarily the case for like a sitcom where you do need to be, they change things on the fly for uh, so quickly that you do need to memorize. So it'll depend. So um, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Are you saying that 
when you're working on um, these television shows, sometimes that you don't need to memorize the lines. They're going to feed them to you. Or? No, no. I mean that you only know, need to know small chunks at a time. Oh, okay. You don't need to yeah. know the whole script. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah, you don't need to know have it all. You know, and a lot of times when you get to set, they have your little slide sheet ready for you. This is the little chunk that you need to know for this little part. Now, let's do that. And then you get a long break because of the different camera setups and lighting. And if you are anyways unsure about the dialogue, you can go over it then and make sure. But uh, again, it's always best to be fully prepared. Yeah. Um, but agonizing over lines is not a thing. Also, just the uh, being on camera is going to be different from what you might be used to in an acting class or certainly on an acting stage, theater stage. Um, your movements are a lot more subtle, a lot more... Uh, honest in the sense that you don't need to reach the person in the 20th row now the camera's right there oh, okay. on you uh, another little thing too is how you focus your intensity for your emotions I mean you realize there's on a, a production even film productions do this as well different types of shots they're gonna have of you and so you're gonna do the same scene over and over with multiple um, camera angles camera Distance is a wide shot than a close up. So if you've got an emotional scene that you've got to do, uh, realize that you really want to have it there for the close up. You can do it for the wide shot, but make sure you know you've got to have it for the close up. These are little business onset things that you you learn once you get to start doing it. So if you're in a scene where you need to scream and show all this rage, yeah. you don't want to exhaust yourself before the camera's really going to capture. Yeah, yeah. You want to kind of pay attention and know that when it's going to be really important for you. Uh, yeah. Does the do the directors help you with that? Do they let you know, like save it for the close up, or is that something? No, nah, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> they no. want it hundred percent. Yeah, time. they want it every time. And yeah. and again, directors typically are focused on so many things. Yeah. Um, they tr they hired you based on your audition. They're trusting you to get this right when you walk in. Oh, nice. I walked in. I worked on a show where I walked in, didn't speak to the director once. They started rehearsal, just started the rehearsal. Wow. I had no idea where I need to be. Nothing, but I had to figure it out right then and do it and be on cue and everything. And that's again, that's you know, that's when you know you're. They consider you the pro. They trust you to to get it right when you get there to know what you're doing. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do you do stage acting? Do you, I do. Yeah, yeah I do. I'm uh, a member of the Road Theater Company in Los Angeles now. And I did some stage work before, some in, uh, in Detroit, as I told you, but also in San Diego. Uh, a couple of really great productions. Um, Script Friends Theater. Um, I did a couple things there. And uh, there's a couple other projects I did. But stage is good to have because it is... Um, I think it kind of lets you kind of explore a lot more, lets you be bigger. Yeah. Um, because uh, one thing I learned working with Burke Studios uh, is that that's part of an exercise is to let yourself go bigger with your, with your feelings, with your emotions, with your physicality, and then know to rein it in for the camera. And there's something that's more intense when you can do that. Yeah. Um, I can't really explain that. You gotta, <laughs> you to live it. gotta do it. Yeah. Do you have a? Do you prefer stage or do you prefer working in front of the camera? I actually prefer working in front of the camera. Yeah. Uh, I like stage, um, but it's different reasons. I mean, I think stage is great to help you with your art, and with your craft. Uh, there's a different feeling when you're on a stage, having an audience in front of you. Um, but I still feel that somewhat when I'm on a set watching the crew production crew watching me as well it still feels a little bit like that um, but I prefer the camera because uh, I like the subtle real things that you can express okay. on a yeah. camera whereas on a stage you've got to be bigger whether yeah. it's yeah. whether it comes whether it's natural or not to you you've got to be bigger for the audience what do you uh, what do you as an actor expect from a director what are what are some of the experiences you've had I think um, as a director, I uh, directors that I can see really just are well organized, um, that uh, really have a good sense of what they're wanting from a shot. Um, those are typically the best to work with. Um, the ones that typically trust me to do my job well. I don't mind the director that says, "Hey, let's try a different way or try a different emotion." That's that's okay. But being organized, I think, is uh, important. I think. You know, when I work with some young student directors that uh, it can be frustrating for any person, let alone actor, 
when you're waiting and not sure what's going to happen next because the director doesn't know what's going to happen mm. next. That's you know that's one thing. Mm. Do you have um, do you have any horror stories of of sets that you were on where it just was uh, not a great experience or or roles where you felt like what am I what am I doing here or have you been lucky and you pretty much enjoyed all the projects you've worked on? I have enjoyed them, but there are still some projects. I'm like, what am I doing? Here? <laughs> I won't mention names. No, you don't, you don't throw anybody under the bus. no like, they what, know who they are. But uh, they're they're always fun uh, projects. But I look back on them, they were, it was. It was like, yeah, you know, this is. <laughs> I'm trying this. Yeah, I'm trying this role out. I'm trying this experience out. Um, I think it, the only times that I feel like there's uh, there's bad experiences when you know, we're not cared for properly as, as a person. I mean, if I'm on a set and you got me out in the freezing cold mm. with oh. no jacket, I worked on one thing that I was on a, a football field, freezing, freezing with like a t-shirt on. And oh, because they had a wide shot they wanted to get, they, we couldn't have our jackets on. And so every, every series of takes took forever. And I left and I was physically ill. I was like sick for, I think a couple of weeks. Um, wow. Because of that, so that's a bad experience. <laughs> when you can't work the next day, that's a bad experience. So, yeah. So, take care of your actors. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, the food thing. I'm, you know, it's okay. I'm not gonna yell if you don't have filet mignon. Although yeah. I did work this one set. They had, they had like mignon. rack of lamb and like shrimp. And I was like, you work for them. Want, right? <laughs> but yeah, you know, if you got, yeah, it's okay. Just you know, you want to have you know some sustenance, but really just make sure that. While you're doing your job, the people that you've hired to sit and wait for you are at least comfortable. Okay. You know? Do you just focus on acting or are you interested in writing or directing or anything? Good aspect? question. I just like to act. Yeah. Uh, and I, you know, I applaud people that have the skill to branch out to writing or to directing. Mm -hmm. um, it's not something that I have an interest in right now. And I'm wondering if that'll change. I've been asked to direct, I've been asked to write, which I actually am doing. <laughs> I'm writing a uh, a really uh, a really good piece uh, for the stage about an actor named Ira Aldrich. He was a uh, he's a black actor from the 1820s, okay. and he was from New York. He immigrated to Europe, and he was the first actor, first black actor to play Othello on stage in London. Oh. Now remember Took that long, huh? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Wow. And it didn't go over well. It, uh, even at the time, London was sort of in the you know sort of a balance between liberal and still hardcore slave uh, protagonist. But yeah, he was the first guy to do it, black guy to do it. On all, and as we know, Othello is an African American yes role, and it was done by Caucasian actors for since times of Shakespeare. Hmm. So. But yeah, it's a great piece about his life uh, that I'm working on researching and writing about that I hope to have up at the Road Theater uh, at some point uh, in the next couple months. Um, it's my first foray into really writing something. And uh, I don't know. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to tell a story like I think it, I would want to tell it. Uh, I try to make connections personally as for myself and this character as well. There's a lot of things to, to think about when you're writing. I heard a really interesting anecdote once about how actors are probably going to be the one of the most experienced people on a set. And the logic was that a director may only direct, you know, if they're lucky, 10 movies in their career, and an actor would work on tens of movies, if not hundreds. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's why... So many actors get into directing after a while because they have this wealth of knowledge and experience. Yes, um, that could be it too. Uh, I see a lot of people that are series regulars on shows that end up direct, be directing some episodes. Yeah, and it could be because they've seen the directors come because in, in an episodic, typically, I and mean, they may have a director that's there most of the time, but they kind of rotate the directors out a bit in these shows. And so, as an actor, you're seeing different directors come and go, and you get a sense of what they're doing and Maybe after a while, you're like, hey, I can, I can do this. <laughs> yeah. And you talk to the producers and networks. Hey, do you mind if I direct? And they'll either say yeah or no. But yeah. Well, and you get to see all the different varieties of, of directors, producers, DPs. You sort of get to see it uh, far more often than most people do. 
right? As an actor, you're on sets, you're around a lot of, you're auditioning, you're kind of meeting everybody. Yeah. I rely on a lot of actors, you know, to tell me what's going on and what films are being made and what, because they're out there mm-hmm. going to five auditions a week and yeah. uh, I'm, I'm not. So there's certainly that piece of it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You get to meet a lot of different, different people and I don't know. I, uh, I, 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 I don't want an actor. I, I wouldn't want an actor to come into a production or a set, um, with the sense that they know more than everyone else on the yeah, set. Yeah, it could be disastrous. It's, it's a, it's a, it, I think it's a bad recipe um, for a, a good production. So. Uh, so what does the future hold for you? Are there any upcoming productions where people can see you, or do you have any um, plans? For um, there are some commercials um, that are uh, still set to come out. Uh, I was actually just in a commercial that aired on the Super Bowl, um, it was <laughs> another one of those things. Where it was a rainy day, and it was interesting to see that. But it was a uh, it was a Super Bowl commercial. It was for the Super Bowl. I we didn't know it was for the Super Bowl. Oh, okay. I didn't find out till a couple of weeks after it shot that it was going to be on the Super Bowl. My agent uh-huh. contacted me and said, "Hey, were you in this commercial?" I'm like, uh, "I think so. Why? Yeah, it's going to air on the Super Bowl." I'm like, what? Um, nice. So yeah, uh, I had no idea. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm always uh, auditioning. My focus is to uh, next is for the series regular on a show, uh, whether it be something brand new or something currently in production. And uh, from you know, at some point they're also getting more into major feature films, which is another milestone for me as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, have you done feature films? Have they been? Um have you done any? Were they student films or mainly student? I've worked. I've worked on some major films, um, but not as a principal role. Yeah. I've been in them. Um, my girlfriend Peggy has this joke about how she <laughs> spots me in these movies, or people have spotted me in these movies, and uh, I uh, I never played up because I'm like I was just you know I barely you know sometimes I'll, yeah I where have people spotted you what, the movies all right <laughs> so. The short list. <laughs> if you watch the star, a star is born. Oh, nice. There is a scene where they're in the bar, and uh, this guy comes up and starts harassing them. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's a police cop bar, and I'm in one the, of the cop bar, one of the cops. Oh, okay. um, there is a new movie coming out with Eddie Murphy called Dolomite. Oh, it's a based on the comedian. Yeah, well, he had a film series back in the '70s okay. as well. And I think it's going to be just as racy. I only worked the one day on it, but I think there's no. It's I think someone screened it and it said, "Yeah, I was absolutely oh. <laughs> visible in this." Um, what else? I can't think of them. Those two are the top of my head. I can think of that were major. Ones. And again, these are you know, um, you know feature film um, productions. They are they are uh, they are on a relaxed schedule it seems to me uh whereas an episodic they got to pump out you know an episode every week and a half two weeks wow. uh whereas feature film they've got you know some time depending on their budget to get through scenes doing it over and over so okay yeah cool um well i think that about wraps it up oh okay yeah yeah, yeah thanks for coming out and talking sure. to anything us. else jody yeah. what do you got uh, <laughs> any final <laughs> any final words from for all the aspiring actors, for all actors the aspiring out there. actors here in San Diego uh, and around the country, sure. Um, you know, give us something. I don't know. I I would say uh, be okay with you know getting a support system for yourself. You know, if it's just one other actor that you just you know really gel with, um, and having that as someone to help you and, and motivate you because it's gonna you're gonna might need that. You know, having someone to let you know, hey, you're good. You can do this. I'm behind you. I'm here to help you. Um, and exchange information with being a part of the community. A community is great as well. I think uh, the 48 hour film project, uh, that's a great community to be a part of. The San Diego Film Consortium, great community to be a part of. So just get involved. Yeah, be make, involved make friends. and um, really seek out ways to understand the business of acting. I think you've got a lot of great tools in San Diego for the craft. But there are still some opportunities here in San Diego for you to learn the business of acting and seek those out because that's going to be really important. And even though this business changes and it's changed a lot in the last 10, 15 years, 
you really want to be on top of how the business works for you because you are risking yourself not managing your expectations well of how things are. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. That's great advice. Okay. Well, uh, we've been here speaking with Merrick MacArthur, um, professional actor from Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what? It took me a while to be able to say that. Yeah. You, it, it, I, I w- it was odd for me to say I'm an actor to mm-hmm. people uh, for a while, I, a long time. I think it, it took uh, just a couple of years ago I was able to actually start saying it regularly. But before it was like I felt either like pretentious or, yeah, movie. like, uh, sure, you're an actor, buddy. <laughs> really? <laughs> what have you been in? Or, you know. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I can, I can say that with confidence Great. and with comfort. Is there anything you'd like to plug? Do you have any websites or any anything you want to direct people to? Um, let's see. Anything I'd like to plug? Um, I don't know, I've talked about a few things already. Um, there's a lot of where to contact you would be great. <laughs> uh, His agent. Yeah. Yes. Uh, for work, you want to go through my agent, my theatrical agent's Aqua Talent Agency. My manager is Caviar Entertainment, and my commercial agent is Avalon Artist Group in Los Angeles and San Diego. It is through Elegance Talent Agency. Um, but as far as um, other information you want to get, you look to, I mean, there are certain groups on Facebook that pass great information. There's a san diego actors facebook group there's a san diego film consortium facebook group that has a lot of great information um seek out if you're looking to learn business stuff i know that uh d candace paul does a really good uh acting audition course called actors for real um if you want to learn some things about la or people in la i know my girlfriend peggy you guys have seen her uh vlog uh, headshots by peggy where she's got a lot of LA people there, a lot of big actors, a lot of writers and, and agents that can give you a lot of insights. She does a weekly vlog that airs at uh, 10 a.m. every Thursday. Uh, what else? What other pluggy That's things? That's a lot of pluggy, plugs. <laughs> pluggy, pluggy stuff. Um, yeah. I, I I think that's that's, <laughs> that's probably it. Yeah, that's good. That's yeah. great. All right, we've been speaking with Merrick as we've said. Merrick, yeah. thank you for coming. Sure, out. sure. Great to be here. We'll have to talk to you again sometime. Thank you for listening, everybody. This has been the Film Consortium Podcast. Thank you. I'm Derek Acosta. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And I'm Jody Philly. That's right. We'll see you next time. Yeah.